All praise to the Most High. All praises. Tonight's topic is called Don't Eat Like a Pig. Watch this. Let's open up with the book of Exodus 20, verse 17. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Let's start there. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Go ahead. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, mm -hmm. nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So now this is the last commandment. The most High God is commanding us that we must not be covetous. We must not be covetous. The reason why you see as a people we have, there's a lot of, there's huge statistics regarding obesity in the black community is because we have the spirit of covetousness on us. That's what they call it. That's what they call it in big. You just eat everything. Okay? Read again. Verse 17. Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 17. Go ahead. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou don't shalt not cover... Hold on. It says, don't cover thy neighbor's house. You understand? Greed. That goes, that's what this goes into. Go ahead. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Don't cover, don't, 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 don't want to deal with your neighbor's wife. Go ahead. Nor his manservant. Mm -hmm. Nor his maidservant. Read. Nor his ox. Nor his ass. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Whatever your neighbor has, he says, don't cover that day. You must be satisfied with your portion. That's what he said. Watch this. Give me Sarah chapter 40, verse 28. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 40. And verse 18. Verse 18. I'm sorry. Verse 18. That's what I want right there. Sarah 40, verse 18. Read that. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 40, verse 18. Come on. To labor and to be content with that a man hath mm. is a sweet life. You see that thing? Is it to labor and to be content? The key is being content. Okay? To be content with that a man has. Is a what kind of life? Is a sweet life. Is a sweet life. Why? Because as a people, as long as you have that covetous spirit, guess what? You're not going to have a sweet life. You will not have a sweet life. Let me prove that. Give me the book of Sirach. Still. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 1. Sirach 31, verse 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 1. Watching for riches consumeth the flesh, mm. and the care thereof driveth away sleep. You see what he's saying? He says, watching, meaning caring for riches consumeth the flesh. It's going to consume you because greed and covetousness is what's driving you. That's why you see a lot of our, a lot of our people. They are wealthy, but they, are, they, have, they live a life of continual sickness. They are always sick, in and out of hospital. You understand? There's always something going on with them. So they don't have a sweet life. Why? Because they have a, they have a covetous spirit. They are greed. Okay? It says, for riches consumeth the flesh, and the care thereof driveth away sleep. You're not going to get no rest. You're not going to get no sleep. You're not going to have peace in your spirit. You understand? Read. Watching care will not let a man slumber, mm. as a sore disease breaketh sleep. So the reason why he's always awake, he's always worried, when he goes to sleep, his mind is racing all over the place, the mind that muses upon many things. Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 9. We're coming back here to Sarah 31. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Start at verse 14. Wisdom, Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, mm. and our devices are but uncertain. So the thoughts, the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Our devices goes into your plans. You always have plans. They, but they never executed dreamers. Okay, these are dreamers right here. And our devices are but uncertain. Because your mind... Your mind is what? It's not on the Lord. Your mind is not on God's commandments, which the Lord will give you peace. Okay, come on. Next verse. Read. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, 
Mm-hmm. The corruptible and, body. This corrupt, the, the corruptible bodies talk about our mortal bodies. He says it presses down the soul. Why? Because your flesh is always looking for something. Your flesh is always coveting for something. You have a covetous spirit. You understand? You don't have the brakes. I want a wall. You just keep going like a pig. Keep going. And the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. And the earthy tabernacles weigh down the mind that muses upon many things. Because your mind is, listen, your, 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 like, the mind is like a mind of a child. One minute you are here, one minute you are there. You are there. You are, everything just grabs your attention. Why? Because your, your mind does not have root. You don't have, you are not rooted and, and grounded. So the mind is all over the place, all the times racing. It's always musing upon many things. And those things, the things that are not profitable for you. You understand? They drive away sleep. Let's go back now. Ecclesiasticus 31, verse 2 again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 31, verse 2. Watching care will not let a man slumber. Mm. As a sore disease breaketh sleep. So now it says watching, watching care will not mean what? If you are always stressing about this stuff, you are always stressing about how to, you're always stressing about the next deal, about the next, listen, it says what? It says, will not let a man slumber. As a sore disease breaketh sleep. You're not going to have no rest. You understand? Why? Give me Sarak 38. Okay, Sarak 38, 34. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 34. Go ahead. But they will maintain the state of the world and that's why and they are awake all day. Hold on. They will maintain the state of the world. They are not laboring because this goes also into laboring. But watch this. He says they will maintain the state of the world because coming back to food now, because that's what we're going to deal with, is that, think about it. He says that but they will maintain the state of the world and all their desire is in the work of their craft. For you to maintain the state of the world, guess what you have to do? You always have to be what up to date with the new trends. You understand? Because when you look at the TV now, there's all this cooking stuff. There's cooking stuff everywhere. You understand? All day you'll be looking at this cooking stuff. Guess what? Your spirit is going to be activated to be covetous. You understand? When you enter the shop, you can't listen. You don't know how to control yourself. You understand? You just be buying everything. And guess what? The, the stuff that you have bought, you put them in the plate, you want to eat them all on the same day. Cabbage your spirit. Okay, as if somebody is going to eat your food while you are eating it. If this is you with your plate by yourself, but you eating like somebody is going to take your food in a couple of somethings. You understand? Um, keep going. Uh, Sarak 31 verse 3. Let's go back. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The rich have great labor in gathering riches together. Come on. And when he resteth, he is filled with his delicates. He is filled. He is filled. You see what it means when it says filled? You are filled with delicacies. There's no moderation going on here. He is filled. When something is filled, that means to the brim. You eat until your eyes pop out. You understand? Or you just like a cow. Your, your lips always have to be moving. You always have to be chewing something. You can't help yourself. You understand? Good, you're not satisfied if there's no something in your, in your mouth. You, you're not satisfied if you're not chewing something. That's the point. He says he is filled with his delicacies. Oh no, he's delicate. Okay, watch this. Give me... Give me Exodus. Go back to Exodus 20. Let's go back there. Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Read. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That's the key right there. Anything, anything that is thy neighbor, the Lord is saying, don't, don't cut it there. You understand? We're going to go deeper into this. Watch this. Give me Exodus 20 verse 3. Jump up to verse 3. 
verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Watch this. Colossians 3, verse 5. Remember what we just read in Exodus 20, verse 17? Covetousness, right? The Lord, the Lord is saying, don't have other gods before you. Watch this. This coveting of food, guess what it's called? Watch this. Let's go. Colossians 3, verse Colossians. 5. Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. You see what he's saying? Mortify, meaning deaden, put to death them cravings and all that. He says, mortify your members which are upon the earth. Because we're on the earth right now. You understand? We are in captivity. Okay, come on. Fornication. Guess what? And you know, I've been seeing something called food porn. You know, I've been seeing some ads all over this of food porn. You understand? Corey, this kingdom is so perverse. You understand? Read that thing again. Mortify what? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. And okay, read that again. Read, read, keep going. Inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, mm. and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Read that thing again for me. I'm sorry. Read verse four, verse five again. Colossians chapter three, verse five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Read. Fornication, mm. uncleanness, Come on. inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, Read. and covetousness, which is idolatry. You see what we read in, in, in Exodus? Okay. In Exodus, um, it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before the Lord. Guess what? Covetousness is idolatry. Covetous, the spirit of covetousness, that's idolatry. So we need to do what? We need to get specific of what it means. We need to get the specifics. Hmm, I'm getting distracted by something. You know, you can't just search for anything simple, right? Uh, like I'm, I'm searching for food porn and the stuff for that, there's other stuff that are popping up here. Oh my God, man. Okay, let me share my screen so we see what this food porn is. Because I've been seeing this. And there was a notice here in, I think, Calfontaine. There, there was something like that as well. Could you read that? It says, what happens to your brain when you see food porn? What happens to your brain when you see food porn? Come on. There is a spike in the hormone, ghrelin, mm -hmm. which causes you to feel hungry and prepares your body to eat. You see that thing? It says there's a spike in the hormone ghrelin which causes you to feel hungry and prepares your body to eat. So now it says, what happens when you see food porn, right? So this hormone is spiked. Because isn't that that your body is supposed to tell you when to eat and what not to eat? But for some ungodly reason, it's always figured out how to stimulate that so that your brain is doesn't, your brain says, I want to eat now. Even when you're not hungry, you just want to eat. Go ahead. Overall, brain metabolism can increase by up to a staggering 24% mm. as it consumes more energy to sustain these functions. You see that thing? Come on. Amazingly, all of these changes begin in just over a tenth of a second. How did ESO know that? How do they know? It says, it be this, this thing right, this, the changes in your hormones, it says it begins in just over a tenth of a second. How did he figure that out? because they like to do experiments on us. They've been doing it for years, but it says overall brain metabolism can increase by up to a staggering 24%. When you're not hungry, he will stimulate it. You understand? This is heavy. Okay, let's see. Mm. Okay, let's read that. Why is why, food porn popular? Why is food porn popular? Come on. 
But why exactly is food porn so popular? I mean, after all, it's just pictures of things we eat. Mm. We spend a lot less time or energy posting pictures of things we hear, feel, or smell. To do so, we relied on our vision. We used our sense of sight to identify where food was and how to get it. So now, because that's what you ever notice, everywhere you go, there's just pictures of food all over. Anybody notice that? Yes, sir. And, and because now, because like there's a big cause, when, during the time when Rome, you understand, when Rome was about to go down, there was a lot of these things, these restaurant stuff, these food stuff, yes, because there, there was sports, there was cooking, there was food, there was booze, there was fornication going on. All of these things, they were all work in unison. They all work together. That's why Esau, has, is, there's a science behind this. You ever notice, look at uh, places like go, restaurants. There's, there's, they ask you for, the, after you eat, they say dessert. Before you eat, they say, do you want a starter? It's a whole science to it. You understand? They ask for a drink, a starter, then the main course, then a dessert. You see what I'm saying? While you are still there, they're going to offer you any more drinks and all of that. Remember when we were at uh, Monte Casino, that Persian woman, she kept saying, do you not dessert? You remember that? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Because they, they, listen, these nations, they know how to deal. They know the science behind this stuff. You understand? They know the science behind this whole thing. Okay, let's see. Yes, read that. Why is food porn bad? Read that. Why is food porn bad? Mm -hmm. In some cases, food porn, specifically foods high in fat and sugar, mm. has been shown to increase relin, the hunger hormone. The hunger hormone. So why, why you ever notice, look at the kids, right? You see how these, these kids they don't play no more. They are, they are sitting on the couch just playing video games all day. Sitting on the couch watching DSTV all day. They don't go out, they don't run, they don't play nothing, they don't play soccer, tennis, whatever it is. They don't do none of that. You understand? And guess what? That's why when you go to the malls, you see like your Krispy Kreme, your, what's the other names? Krispy Kreme, there's another one. Krispy Kreme, um, you know the food, the food court, when you go to these malls, there's always the food court, all the junk. And that's where you find many of our people in those places, the food court. They're not going to go to the veggie section. No, and, and they do to go to the veggie section. They buy like, an, they, they just buy up apples. They don't buy other stuff. The veggies, they buy tomatoes and onions. Yes. Okay. But when it comes to the sweet stuff, you'll see long queues going into Krispy Kreme. There's another one. It's always next to Krispy Kreme. They also sell these donuts. What do they call that place? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Isn't it Cinnabon, maybe so? Yes, yes. Thank you, Cinnabon. They be selling like those donkey donuts there. Yeah. You see a long queue. Hey, when you look, it's all our people, Israelites. You understand? And guess what? Those sugary stuff, your Cinnabon, your Krispy Kreme, guess what they do? They increase the hunger hormone. They spike it. They spike the hunger hormone. So that's why you see our people are so big because these are the stuff that, he, that spikes the, that hunger hormone to make you just want to eat. You understand? Read that again. In some cases. In some cases, food porn, specifically foods high in fat and sugar, has been shown to increase relin, the hunger hormone. Mm. This could mean that those who engage with more food porn have a greater risk of consuming larger amounts of high sugar, high fat foods. So now the high sugar, the high sugar foods will stimulate you to also get high fat foods. It's a whole thing. That's why Esau tells you the, the amount it takes for you to, uh, to fall into that trap. He says what? He says the tenth of a second. He has the science behind this. You understand? That's why when you go to malls, you see up, they are packed. Okay? And when you look at uh, like, like look at um, 
um, you know, the ice cream selling places, ice cream, okay, ice cream, your donuts, you understand, sweets and all of that. It's always many, a lot of the times you find our people there. And if they are, they are not going to Krispy Kreme or Cinnabon, you understand, where do you find them? The food court. At the food court, where, where do you find them? You find them go KFC, you find them go, what's the other places? KFC, Nando's, hmm. Yes, Nando's. What's the other one? KFC, chicken Nando's, licking. chicken licking, hot wings, and all of that stuff. High, high, high fat foods. So they move from the high sugar foods straight to the high fat foods because they are all interconnected. You understand? And that leads to what? High blood pressure, brain aneurysm, heart disease, blood disease. You understand? Stomach cancers. Okay. Obesity. Okay. Diabetes. The list goes on and on because of that covetous spirit. Okay, now let's go out of that. Go to Colossians 3, verse 5 again for me. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, fornication and cleanness. So hold on. So you have a you, fornication is sexual sins, right? But it's spiritual fornication as well. Because the, 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 the intimacy you have with food, these high sugar foods, high fat foods, that's spiritual fornication, idolatry, worshiping of, the, worshiping of food, idolatry. That's what it is, fornication, spiritual fornication. Let's read that in Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, I believe is chapter 14. Let's get that. Wisdom of Solomon, okay. Chapter 14, verse 12. Watch this. You know what? Start of verse 11. I like verse 11. Let's start there. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 11. Go ahead. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. Visitation, meaning the Lord is going to visit, is going to visit the, the nations and their idols, including our people that worship those idols. Go ahead. Because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination. The creature of God is the creation of God. He says, because of the creation of God, they have become an abomination. Why? Because these idols are abomination unto the Lord. So are these nations worshiping these idols? Go ahead. And stumbling blocks to the souls of men. So the stumbling block is the idols, you understand, to the souls of men goes back to the creature of God, which is the creation of God, hence the souls of men. Go ahead. And a snare to the feet of the unwise. You see that thing? And a snare to the feet of the unwise. Our people are always falling into mischief. Obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. You understand? Stomach cancer, brain disease, gout. All of these diseases, they are based on what? Because our people, they worship food. Spiritual fornication. Idolatry. Okay, come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. The devising of idols, meaning what? So these things are devised. That's why Esau can tell you it, it happens in the tenth of a second. And it, 20, it says your hunger goes 25%. You understand? It's a spiritual thing. Your hunger says go up 25% and that, hap that happens in the tenth of a second. Already, you just want to be buying everything you are seeing on the screen. Because, and another thing also is that you might be thinking, or okay, so the reason why they put the menu up there is huge. Like big, you see big banners, right? And you see the way they do the presentation, that's called food porn. The way they do the presentation of the food and you are in a queue. So you might think the reason why they are doing it is so that when I get to the till, I know exactly what to order. How many times have you seen the people at the back of the line, right? You, you would assume they are looking at what they are going to order. When they get there, they are still confused. Anybody see that? Yes, sir. All the time. Because that has nothing to do with... Esau didn't put that thing up there so that when you get to the till, you know what to buy. No, no. It's called food porn. Spiritual fornication. They are waking your brain. By the time we get to the queue, you've seen all these big banners is your appetite has gone back is gone up by 25% and it only happened within the tenth of a second by the time you get to the queue you are so hungry 
you just give me buying whatever. You see that? Hmm. Read again. Verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. That's Genesis. The devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication because idolatry started with our four, four parents, Adam and Eve. He says, was the beginning, meaning from Genesis, spiritual fornication, food porn. You have this intimate relationship with food. You understand? Food porn, spiritual fornication. Go ahead. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. The invention of what? Food porn, the corruption of life. Because it teaches, it teaches the, 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 our people to be what? To be covetous. It teaches our people. And when you are covetous, what happens to you? You destroy your own self. You understand? Because you're not satisfied. You're not content with your portion. So you just keep going. You understand? You see, like, you see it month end. Our people be buying these big pizza boxes. Because now they've got, like, double, right? There's a double. There's a pizza box that you see. It's like, like two pizzas in there. Is it two or is it just this big heap? Is it two pizzas? Yes, hmm. There's even three, like, sir. You, I mean, you can make this up three. <laughs> hmm? So what is that telling you? Food porn. Now you are so hooked to this gibbonous pizza, you can't help yourself. Every Friday, you just, you know, I feel like a pizza. You go and get it. You understand? Let's go back. Colossians. Okay, 3 verse 5 again. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Go ahead. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication. And cleanness, mm. inordinate affection. Stop right there. Inordinate affection, because the the type of the type of relationship our people have with food, food, alcohol. That's why every every day now, you know, like I've noticed, like you go to your taxi ranks, there's always these um, hamites that have like a, I think they eat like they eat. I think it's like a inyama inko, right? I think that's what it is. It's like, yes. um, and they have it on this, uh, it's like a table. You see people standing there, it's like there's two on one side and then you've got, they be chopping, I think it's like that. That if anybody seen what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. They have two, and you see people standing, just eating there on that, uh, on Lezeng, it's like Lezeng. Mm. You know, you ever been to, um, uh, when we go and, and you know, we, we dig the, the, the burial hole, you understand? When, when, when it's time for the, you know, when they go to bury the, the deceased and all that, in the morning, um, we go over there, the people that were working in the, in the cemetery and all that, we would eat on, we would eat from Lezenge, you understand? So it's the same thing that I'm seeing like at the, on, at the taxi ranks, even in the gases. You understand? And you you be and when you look around, the place is so filthy. But the people are standing there just eating right there. Inordinate affection. Think about it. Inordinate affection. You have an inordinate affection to food. You understand? Read that part again. Inordinate what? Inordinate affection. Come on. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. Read. And covetousness, which is Come idolatry. On. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Spiritual fornication. Idolatry. Covetousness. Okay, watch this. Give me Sirach 10 verse 9. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 10 verse 9. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 verse 9. Read. Why is earth and ashes proud? Earth and ashes goes into man. Earth and ashes goes into man. Give me that in Sirach 17.32 real quick. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 verse 32. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 verse 32. Read. He vieweth the power of the height of heaven. And all men are but earth and ashes. 
and all men, all men, men are but earth and ashes. Let's go back. So that 10 verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 9. Ray. Why is earth and ashes proud? Why is man proud? That's what he's asking. Why is man proud? Come on. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Stop right there. You hear what the Lord is saying? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. If you have a covetous spirit, the Lord is saying that's the most wicked thing on this earth. He says there is no more, there's not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Could you imagine that? Because a covetous man is an idolater. You understand? Worshipping of idols. So the idol today is what? Food. And idolatry corrupts. Corrupts. You understand? It corrupts your life. Because what we read in Wisdom of Solomon, it says, and the invention of them, the corruption of life. That's why our people's thought process is, is defiled. When they go to the grocery store, when they want, go to buy food and all of that, they don't think of buying veggies. It's always meat, 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 and yogurt, and danone. And Mazimba. You look in the trolley, there's no veg. You understand? No vegetable. That's, that's what we're reading here. Read that again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 9. Go ahead. Why is earth and ashes proud? Mm -hmm. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Because man is proud. And we know what pride is. Jump down to verse, uh, verse 12 so we can understand what pride is. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. So when you go outside of God's commandments, it's called pride. Go ahead. And his heart is turned away from his maker. His heart is turned away from his maker. Jump back, jump back up to verse 9. Come on. Why is earth and ashes proud? Mm -hmm. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Because this covetousness, which is idolatry, is going to cause your spirit to have to be proud, to be proud. You are going to have a prideful spirit because, guess what? Because of what? Idolatry, covetousness. Go ahead. For such an one setteth his own soul to save. Meaning what? You're going to destroy, you're going to sell your own soul for what? For the thing that you want, because you worship it, you covet after it. Go ahead. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. Meaning what? He will sell. He will sell his bum just to get that thing. That's the key. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach fourteen verse three now. Sirach chapter fourteen verse three. Ecclesiastes chapter fourteen verse three. Read. Riches are not comely for a nigger. He says, riches are not comely for a nigger. Look at what our people are doing today, like in the music industry, in the movie industry, and so forth. He says, they are not comely for them. The things they do, they be doing drugs. They've been changing their, their sexual orientation. You understand? They be, um, they be dealing with multiple partners, both men and women. You understand? Because they have too much. They don't know what to do with that money. Because riches are not come before a niggard, a covetous man. You understand? Go ahead. And what should an envious man do with money? What should an envious man do with money? Because guess what? A niggard is envious. And what do they do with the money they have? I mean, look at that brother. You understand? Kenny something. That had millions with Kanyimbao. Look at the stuff that he's been doing. You understand? Look at these actors, the stuff they do, the soccer players, the stuff they do. What should an envious man do with money? They don't even know what to do with this money. You understand? And they trust upon it because guess what? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Timothy 6. Okay. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. You know what? Start of verse 10. Start of verse 10. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Because a nigger does not know what to do with money. He is envious with the money he has. He envies his own money. You understand? Read. Which while some coveted after. 
You see that? That's the key right there. While some coveted after because money is their God and the things they get with that money they have, that also is their God because that money gives them, gets them access to those idols that they're going to get. Do you ever see these people that have a very, it's a very strange relationship with their car, their phone. Their, listen, because why? They covet, that's their God right there. They always be polishing it and all of that. Yes, that's their God. They worship that thing. Okay, read that again. He says, while well, which, which while some coveted after, read. Which while some coveted after, mm -hmm. they have erred from the faith. They have erred from the faith in Christ. Go ahead. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They pierced themselves, I mean, they destroy themselves with many sorrows. Because the stuff that that money gives them access to is what's going to destroy them. You understand? Jump down to verse 17 now. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Charge them that are rich in, his, in this world. Meaning what? Hold them accountable that are rich in this world. Charge them that are rich in this world. Go ahead. That they be not high-minded. That don't, they, must be, they must not be proud because our people are prideful as hell. They don't want to help their own. You understand? I remember during June 16 when we went to teach, the people that the black men and black women that came there driving expensive cars, they were not there for the youth. They were only there to, to show everybody that, you see, I've made it. I'm out the hood. I've made it. But you see, the mindset is about me, 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 me. They don't give a damn about nation. They don't care about nation building. You understand? And in their heads, no, we want to inspire these kids to also be like, no. Because the same people that be driving all these expensive cars, they don't care about their community. They don't care about their nation. They don't. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. They are very selfish. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Read. Charge them that are rich in this world, Ray? that they be not high-minded. Mm -hmm nor trust in uncertain riches. Because the Lord is telling us that they trust in those uncertain riches. You understand? Come on. But in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You see that thing? But we must, they must trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. You understand? Come on. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, Mm. ready to distribute. Come on. Willing to communicate. You see what the Lord is saying? is that, that they must do good, meaning keep the commandments, that they be rich in good works, God's laws, ready to distribute, to help your nation, willing to communicate. Go ahead. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Because guess what? When they help us in this truth, they, it gets, well, they laying up a treasure for them in the time to come. You understand? The Lord will have mercy upon them. But a lot of our people, you understand? You have your motifes, you have let they don't care about this truth. They don't care. You understand? Read. That they may lay hold on eternal life. On eternal life. Meaning ruling all nations on earth and ruling them forever and them saving us as having infinite riches. They are not, they are not thinking about that. For them is only the here and the now. No long term, nothing. Okay, go back. Ecclesiasticus chapter 14, verse 3. Ecclesiasticus chapter 14, verse 3. Read. Riches are not comely for a nigger. Mm -hmm. And what should an envious man do with money? What should an envious man do with money? That's the things you see what they do today. You understand? Buso mizi. Hmm? Who can you be bleaching their skin? The, the stuff they do, because guess what? They envy their own money. And guess what? The things they do with the money they have, they end, not only do they envy their own money, but they envy the other nations, what they do with their money. They envy them. That's why they blond their hair. Who do they envy? The white woman. Who can you bow? Hmm? They bleach their skin. Who do they envy? The white woman. You understand? The black man. Who do they envy? They envy the white man. How? He's clean shaven. He does not have a beard. You understand? Stuff like that. They do that. They want to be gay because white man is doing it. They want to be lesbian. White man is doing it. Hmm? 
Black men want to be wanting to be lesbian. Can't make this stuff up. Jump down to verse five. Come on. Verse five. He that is evil to himself, mm -hmm. to whom will he be good? To none. He's not going to be good to nobody. He's evil to it, so towards himself because he envies his own soul. To whom will he be good? Nobody. Come on. He shall not take pleasure in his goods. Mm. He shall not take pleasure in his goods. I mean, they are not satisfied. Okay, watch this. Give me, um, could you read verse 3 again? Jump up to verse 3. Something I missed. Read verse 3 again for Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 3. Go ahead. Riches are not comely for a nigger. Mm. And what should an envious man do with money? What should an envious man do with money? Watch this. Sirach 31, verse 24. Riches are not good, are not comely for a nigger. Okay. Nigger is in the Bible. Sirach 31, verse 24. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 24. Read. But against him that is a nigger of his meat, the whole mm. city shall murmur. You see that thing? Against him that is a nigger of his meat, the whole city will complain. Because remember the sushi king and all of that? People were raving on social media about this thing. The sushi king. Yes, the whole city shall murmur. You understand? You see these, uh, but, but, um, you know these boys? Um, uh, okay, I'll remember it. I'm going to forget my point now. Read verse 24 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 24. Read. But against him that is a nigger of his meat, the whole mm -hmm. city shall murmur. The whole city will complain. Come on. And the testimonies of his niggardness shall not mm. be doubted of. <laughs> That's some heavy stuff. And the testimonies, meaning many people are going to speak about this Negro's niggardness, this sister's niggardness of his niggardness shall not be doubted of. Meaning nobody's going to doubt that brother is a nigger right there. He is niggard of his meat. You understand? Unum You ever seen those people? You cannot take them to a buffet. You understand? Because remember, when you go to a buffet, I get it, there's different types of foods. You start at the beginning and then you have a plate. You must, one spoon, yeah. One spoon of this and then we'll check, okay, one spoon of that and then one spoon of that. But a nigga, you know what they will do? The first at oh, the beginning of the oh, of where, where the food is, they're gonna get a plate, right? They're gonna put multiple spoons in that plate. Now they have to go to the next dish, do the same. By the time they get to the end of the queue, is this mountain Kilimanjaro on the plate? You understand? Why do you think these buffets are making so much money? Where in Monte Cassino, in there's not there's another one in mainland. There's a buffet. You understand? There's another one in Brooklyn Mall in Pretoria. There's a buffet over there. In the Protea Hotel, there's also a buffet. Okay? And I've been to those buffets. I see how our people eat. It's unbelievable. You understand? Heaps upon heaps upon heaps of food. As if like the food is going to finish. And another thing also is that what Esau does is he will say, no, the buffet starts at this time, it ends at this time. So now you're thinking, hmm, I'm paying 250, right, for this buffet from nine o'clock up to 11. So in your mind, you are thinking that 250, I have to eat everything. You see what he does? So now you are eating against 11 o'clock because you want by the time 11 o'clock comes and he tells you, you can't take the food, you must eat here. What does that do to the mind of the Negro? The mind, the, listen, the Negro is like, uh, listen, there's all these food here. You understand? That's the same thing when you go to the malls, the food court, you go to these uh, high, high, high sugar foods and all that. It's the same mindset, the same programming. The same program is running. Okay? Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 14, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 14. Let's go back there. Sirach 14, verse 10 real quick. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 10. Go ahead. A wicked eye envieth his bread, mm. and he is a niggard at his table. 
You see what he's saying? A wicked eye envieth his bread. You envy your own food. Let, here you are. You've got a plate. You put food on the plate, but you are envying that food that you are looking at. And what that envy causes you to do what? You eat. You don't even chew the food. The way you chew, you just chew a little bit, you swallow. You chew a little bit, you swallow. You chew. A, that's going to cause stomach issues and cancers and all of that. Yes, diabetes. Because you're not giving your body, you're, you're not helping your system to digest the food you, you eat. In your mind, your stomach is this bottomless pit. You can just be throwing stuff. It doesn't get full. So he says, a wicked eye envieth his bread. And he is a niggard as his table. His own, not somebody else's table. His own table. What makes you think when he gets to somebody else's table, you think he's not going to hold himself back? No. He's going to go all out because he has no breaks. You understand? Read it again. Verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 10. Read. A wicked eye envieth his bread, mm -hmm. and he is a niggard at his table. And he's a niggard at his table. You know, he's a black ashy demon at his table. Because think about it, right? Um, hmm, let me see if I want to use that example. Nope. Give me Sarah 39, verse 26. Ecclesiastes 39, verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 26. Mm -hmm. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, mm -hmm. milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. So these things, they are what? These things are basic needs. They are basic necessities in life. You understand? Water, fire, iron, salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, the blood of the grapes, which is wine, and oil and clothing. These are important for use of, they are important for men. Okay, come on, watch this. Verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly. They are good for the, they are good to the godly, right? Those that knows how to what? They don't have a covetous spirit. They apply the laws of God. You understand? He says they are good to those brothers and sisters that apply the laws of God. Watch the next part of that verse. Come on. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. To the, to the sinners, those that, those that are covetous, those that are niggard at their own table, he says that what they are turned into evil. What is the evil? Sickness. Okay? Obesity. Diabetes. High blood pressure. So on and so forth. They are turned into evil. They will cause diseases. Okay, watch this. Go back to Sarak 14. Sarak 14, verse 3 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 3. Read. Riches are not comely for a niggard. Mm -hmm. And what should an envious man do with money? What should an envious man do with money? He envies others that have that money and do the things they do. Jump down to verse 5. Come on. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. He that is evil to himself. To whom will he be good? Read. He shall not take pleasure in his goods. He don't take pleasure in his good. He is not satisfied with what is God. He is not content. Come on, verse 6. There is none worse than he that envies himself. So how do you get to that level where you envy yourself? Because the spirit of envy will consume you so much so that you'll do things out of character. Why? It says because you envy yourself. What does that mean? There's none worse than he that envieth himself. Watch this. We're coming back here. Wisdom of Solomon. Let's go back there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and verse, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 14. Let's start at verse 12. Read verse 12. Then we're going to jump to verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 12. Come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Mm -hmm. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. The invention of these idols, they corrupt life. Come on. For by the vain glory of men, they entered mm -hmm. into the world. You see why these, these idols was created? For the vain glory of men. For men and women to worship themselves. They are their own God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. 
That's the same thing here. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. So all these uh, idols were created for men to worship themselves. That's why today, if you look at these cooking shows, Ramsey. That's his name, right? Ramsey, is it? Ramsey or Goron Ramsey? Because uh, now I'm thinking about Ramsey's the second. I'm thinking Egypt now. Ram, Goron Ramsey, right? The Hell's Kitchen. I mean, people, millions and millions, they watch that show. You understand? Re Go Hell's Kitchen, something like that. Uh, something, something with Goron Ramsey and all. Listen, people, millions, they watch that show. And people, when they see him, they worship that man. And guess what? How do you worship a man that stands in the kitchen just be cooking food? Let's think about it now. Isn't, isn't, let's go back, let's go back to Sirach 39. I want to show you really the wickedness of this thing. Sirach 39 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 26. Go ahead. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water. Hold on. Stop right there. It says the principal things for the whole use of man's life. Now, these are basic things that a man needs. Basic things that your body needs, right? You would think, you would just look at it, okay, these are basic things. I need to know how to cook so that I can be able to what? Medicine, because food is medicine. I can give myself my medication. Be proactive. Eat healthy. Make healthy choices, right? Okay, come on. Fire. Mm. Iron. And salt. Flour of wheat. Honey. Milk. And the blood of the grape and oil, and clothing. So all these things that they are mentioned here, water, fire, oil, salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and so on. These things right here, what you see here, these are the basic things that a man needs. But somehow, men are famous because of these things. Basic things that anybody can just stand on the stove and cook. But men and women are famous of these things. And people, they are worshipping the men behind the food. You see that? So media is media is a powerful tool and ESO uses it. You understand? So much so that men now, they are being worshipped because of what? Because of these basic things in life. Natural things that they didn't make. They didn't make apples. They didn't make bananas. They didn't make fire. They didn't make honey. They didn't make milk and blood of the grape mm -mm, and oil. None of that. These are natural things that the Lord made on this earth. But now nobody gives praises to the Father for making these things. No, now men are giving praises to men for cooking these things. You can't make this stuff up. You see that thing? Go back to where was that now? Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 14. Right. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Meaning these idols, come on, and worshipping of these idols, right? And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Because when the Lord returns, none of these idols are going to be worshipped this day. But what I'm showing you is, that's why this food porn, that's food porn. When you're sitting there, just be watching all these cooking shows, food pornography. You understand? So that's why if, if you notice, right? Because you must ask yourself, these nations, are they not affected? by the, 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 the food they cook, they are affected. But there are certain things they take. They be taking pills that they, they be taking uh, chemicals to make themselves thin. So what I'm trying to show you is that here they are, they be cooking all these food, right? They are salt, you know, um, you know, high sugar foods, high fat foods and so on and so forth. You'll be seeing them in Hell's Kitchen. They be cooking all this filth, you know, the calamaries and scallops and whatever they call them. And you be asking yourself, hmm, how do they manage to stay in shape? Because the Lord says these nations are corrupt. So guess what? And what I've noticed is that I see Israel that is cooking on these cooking channels. When you look at the way they look versus these other nations, you can see the difference. Because of envy. The question is, how, how far are you willing to go? How deep are you willing to go into that rabbit hole? You understand? Okay. Let's go back. 
Sirach chapter 14. Okay, Sirach chapter 14 and verse 6. Read that again, verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 6. Come on. There is none worse than he that envieth himself. That envieth himself. Because the reason why they envy themselves is because they worship themselves. Go ahead. And this is the recompense of his wickedness. And this is the recompense of his wickedness because the Lord is going to judge you. Okay, come on. Verse 8 now. The envious man has a wicked eye. The envious man has a wicked eye. So because what is the wicked eye? The wicked eye is covetousness. Because you covet, you covet things. You covet things of your neighbor. You covet the things of the other neighbor. You just be covetous. You understand? It says you have a wicked eye because you can kill to get those things. I mean, you ever seen, you know, I mean, just look at month end. Okay, don't just, don't go far. Just keep it simple. Look at what happens during month end. You know, when we be teaching in Thessalonica because, you know, people go to the mall, we are at the right of the center. You understand? We're at the epicenter. And what happens is you see how people come in, empty handed, they go with kids because they got paid. When they move, when they go out, I mean, you look at the plastic bags, but when you examine the contents of the plastics, it's just garbage. Nothing healthy in there. You understand? But you'll see a sister walking with kids, but here's a pizza box. She can't even hold it properly. You understand? Pizza box, two, two liter or two, you know, Coca-Cola, two liters and all that. And another thing that I've noticed is that, you see, he says the devil. Coca-Cola, right? Because people, they like it because that's cocaine. That's liquid, liquefied cocaine, okay? So the reason why now, because there was a complaint that, you know, this Coca-Cola, there's, there's too much sugar in it. Now, let's think now. Now, when you go and buy the Coca-Cola, right? Because, yo, I don't remember the last time I bought that thing. That thing is poison. It says less sugar. Anybody see that? Anybody has noticed that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, he says less sugar. Because I remember there used to be the one, you know, Iso is crafty. He's testing the market. There used to be the one that um, it used to say no sugar, right? And then it, it moved from no sugar to less sugar. Hmm. Anybody ever notice that? Because you could go to the shops and see Coca-Cola that says no sugar. Now, I don't see the no sugar anymore. I see less sugar, Coca-Cola. Hmm. So, but the question is, what is driving people to buy that thing? Is it the sugar? Because even if you say less sugar, the, it psychologically says, no, that means it's healthier because it's less sugar. No, the acid is what makes people to go buy that thing. Because you'll be hearing something. Listen, I, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you from my experience, because I used to drink that thing like nobody's business, okay, until it almost put me to death. The point is, especially that long term, you know that long term in a can? You find it cold, right? And when you open it, you hear that sound. It, 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 oh. You ever hear that? <laughs> then you drink it, right? And when it, when it trickles down your throat, you feel it here by the throat. The acid just be, you, you understand that? And if you leave it, the acid goes out. You can't drink it. It's just sugar in there. But the way Esau made it, he made it seem like, no, the sugar is the problem. No, 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 not the sugar. The acid, the strength of the cocaine in the Coca-Cola is the reason why people go after it. You never hear people say, I'm addicted to Fanta. I never heard that. Anywhere I ever hear somebody says that they are addicted to Fanta, no, not me. I never had that. No, sir. <laughs> but you hear people saying, no, no, listen, I cannot, the day cannot pass if I have not drinking a Coca-Cola. I don't feel right. Hmm? Even the color of that thing is supposed to be suspicious from the get-go. You just be eating this black drink. Hmm? Think about it. You see, we don't think about these things. Read that thing again. Okay. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 14, verse 8. Read. The envious man has a wicked eye. Come on. He turneth away his face and despises men. 
You see, the envious men, they hate men. That's why you notice a lot of our people that are quote-unquote made it, they hate their own people. They hate, they hate their own people. They do. They hate their own people. He says, despises men. And the way they justify their hatred, he says, I made it, so can you. That's what they say. Go ahead. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Now, that's the key right there. A covetous man's eye, because a covetous man's eye has a wicked eye. He says they are not satisfied with their portion. You understand? Because another thing also is that the most High God is about order, right? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 40. Let's read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Read. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. The most High God is about law, is about order and structure. Now watch this. Go back to Sirach 14, verse 8 again, verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 9. Read. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Mm -hmm. Come on. And the iniquity of the wicked dries up his soul. The iniquity of the wicked, because the in, his iniquity is what? Covetousness, idolatry, greed. You understand? A covetous man, he's not satisfied with his portion. The iniquity of the wicked dryeth up his soul. Because the wicked is talking about what? He's talking about Esau now. Because Esau, he will exploit your covetous spirit. That's why when you go to this, the, the malls, the, our people, you see, I'll show you the signs. They go to, they take a trolley, they enter into checkers. They buy, they buy garbage. Meat, 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 meat. No vegetable. Meat, 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 meat. Okay? They be buying meat. They be buying, um, yes, meat. No veggie. Okay? Danone. Because that's what I see in the trolleys. Danone, yogurt, mazimba. Okay? Juice. All of this, that's what they buy. You understand? Then from there, they say, you know what? I'm tired. You know where they go? They go to the food court. They pack their trolley here. They go to the food court. They go and order hot wings. You understand? And some of them, what they do is they go to the food court. They order hot wings. They order, yeah, hot wings and all of that. While they are waiting, they take the slip. Then they go to Krispy Kreme. They order Krispy Kreme or Go Cinnabon. Now you've got grocery in pack, nothing healthy. Then you go to the food court, you'll be buying hot wings, cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be going to uh, the Cinnabon or Krispy Kreme, diabetes. You see this thing? By the time they sit down, you've got a trolley on the left, on, on the table, you've got Krispy Kreme, you've got, yeah, Krispy Kreme, you've got uh, chicken legging. By the time you go home, you've eaten all of that. Not only that, now that you know you're done with eating at the mall, at the mall, I'm, and I'm making emphasis of that, at the mall, then you get home, now you're excited about opening the stuff in the bags now. You open them up. Now, while you're cooking them, you'll be eating at Danone and just waiting for the meat to finish. Yeah. You see this thing? Now, guess what you're watching while you're doing that? You're watching Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> So how, how, how would you not be obese and have this covetous spirit of having worshipping food? There's no way you will not. Think about it. There is no way you will not. Okay? It's a whole science to it. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 30, verse 25. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 30, verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 25. Come on. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Now, that's a heavy thing right there. A cheerful and a good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Because if it, cheerful that goes into joy, that's the fruit of the spirit, and, and a good heart. Give me that in Luke. Okay. Give me that in Luke. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Watch this. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. 
Right? But that on the good ground as a, which in an honest and good heart, in an honest and heard the word, with an honest and good heart, within an, which in an honest and good heart, good heart, come on, having heard the word, keep it. Mm -hmm. They hear the word, those that have good hearts is because they heard the word of God, the laws of God, and they are applying God's laws to their life. That's what's going to make them to be honest and have a good heart. Go ahead. And bring forth fruit with patience. They're going to bring forth the fruit of the spirit with patience. Give me that in Galatians now. Okay. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22. Come on. Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. So now the Apostle Paul is explaining the fruit of the Spirit that Christ is talking about in Luke 8.15. Is saying, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. So what we read in Sarah, go back to Sarah now, 30 verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 25. Read. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. So a cheerful and good heart. So a good heart is the one that hear the word and they keep it. A cheerful heart does the fruit of the spirit with his joy. You understand? Because you have joy in keeping God's commandments and God's commandments teach you discipline, how to discipline your, your, your hand on how much you put on your plate and how much you put in your mouth. You understand? It says you're going to have, you will have a care of his meat and diet. Meaning what? You're going to care about what you eat, how much you eat. You're going to care about that and how you eat. Because brothers and sisters, they, they don't chew food yeah. They don't. You must put food in your mouth and chew it for a good while. Just be chewing the food. Break the food down so that you give your, your stomach, you understand, to release the necessary chemicals to deal with the food that's coming. You understand? And then again, by the time you've taken 10 bites, I'm telling you, you're going to feel like okay, I'm full now, I need to stop. But if you don't chew your food enough, you'll just be eating. That You're putting food in that bottomless pit. Now the body now, by the time you finish that big mountain of Kilimanjaro in your plate, you're not going to feel it immediately. Okay? You get up. Then five minutes to ten minutes after you've done eating, then you start to feel a tightness in your stomach. Because the body was you didn't give the body enough time to deal with the food. Now you just putting in your mouth, you just swallow. You don't chew. By the time the food is done, your stomach is tight. Now you need to drink water. Where is all of that stuff going? Where are they going? You understand? Because the way in which our minds work is like you put food in your mouth, ne? You don't imagine that it's going somewhere in your body. It's like it's going somewhere else. So you don't think about the, the amount of stuff you're putting in your system. You don't think about that. You just think it's going to some foreign place. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sirach 31 verse 23 now. Ecclesiasticus chapter 31 verse 23. Go ahead. Whoso is liberal of his meat, man shall speak well of him. Stop right there. It says, whoso is liberal of his meat. Meaning what? This man is liberal, meaning what? They have a care of their meat and diet. They are liberal. You understand? They are, lib they are not democratic about this thing. They are liberal. You know, democracy, do whatever the hell you want. How you feel? If you feel hungry, you know, just eat until you, your eyes pop out. You understand? Until smoke comes out of your ears. Doesn't matter. Read that again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 23. Read. Whoso is liberal of his meat, man shall speak well of him. 
men shall speak well of him. If you are liberal, meaning what? You have discipline. Because you need to really think about it, right? If you cannot discipline yourself, if you are not disciplined in how you eat, you don't love yourself. Let's think about it. If you're not disciplined in how you eat and how much you eat, you hate your own self. You hate yourself. People that eat until they are, they are, their stomach is so tight, you don't have no love for yourself. You envy yourself. You hate yourself. You understand? Read again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 23. Whoso is liberal of his meat, man shall speak well of him. Come on. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. You see that? And the report of his good housekeeping. The good housekeeping is what? The way you eat and how you look. It says what? And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. Meaning people are going to believe what you say. That's why now everybody is, is working hard now. Exercising, you know what? To get rid of the man boobs. You know what I'm saying? These big stomachs. You know, that, this stuff got to go. The hell is this? Okay, read it again. It is yes, chapter 31, verse 23. Whoso is liberal of his meat, man shall speak well of him. Read. And the report of his good work, of his good housekeeping will be believed. Because here's another thing, by the way. Here's another thing. You see, just because you are thin does not mean you are not covetous. Just because you are thin does not mean you are not covetous. Because some brothers, yeah, they, are, they have a very fast metabolism. But the way they eat, they eat like there's no tomorrow. You have a covetous spirit. You understand? Because somebody might think, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to touch that. Yeah, I'm going to touch it. Okay. Just because you are thin, it doesn't mean you are not covetous. Think about it. You understand? And that covetous spirit, I agree the, the thing you are trusting in is that, no, but, but I'm thin. So nobody going to think, no, I'm covetous. No, no, that covetous spirit will manifest somewhere else. It might not be in the food. Because in the food, you are covetous, but it's not showing. But it's going to pop out somewhere else. Mm, that Negro right there, he's being hiding. You understand? That's what the Lord is trying to show us here. Come on. Verse 24 again. Let's read verse 24 because we read it earlier. But against him that is a niggard of his meat, the whole city shall murmur. You say nobody's going to speak well of him, like it says in verse 23. It says men shall speak well of him. But this nigger right there, it says, but against him that is a niggard of his meat, the whole city shall murmur. Meaning, meaning people are going to talk about you. Go ahead. And the testimonies of his niggardness shall not be doubted of. The I mean, nobody going to doubt. You remember Tegelege? That guy, right? He passed on. You, see, you remember how big that brother was? He was huge. Say leki. Okay. I remember that brother. Sarak 31 verse 12 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 31 verse 12. Come on. If thou sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it. Mm -hmm. And say not, there is much meat on it. Because a lot of the times you might think about it as, okay, here we are, we are sitting down, we're going to eat, right? We have, there's a, there's a lot of food, like when we have feasts and, and stuff like that. It says, if thou sit at a bountiful table full of meat, it says, be not greedy upon it. Meaning don't be covetous. And say, no, don't say this to yourself. There is much meat on it. Meaning, sure, oh, there's so much. That means there's so much I have to eat. No. Because you, you might think this only just goes... Um, it only just ends when you, you in the actual table. No. When you go to the shops, that's a bountiful table. Why do you think on the aisles, you know when you go to these supermarkets now, when you go to buy food, before you get to the till, there's all these aisles. They create those aisles specifically, especially for those covetous Negroes. Because by the time you get to the till, you have already picked, they call them compulsive shoppers. Woolworth, Woolworth has a long line. It, you know, it'd be jigelezi. Ever, anybody ever seen that? You go to Woolworth? Sir. 
You see this long, this long like aisle. You know, it goes up, it goes down. It's like a snake near and so. By the time you get to the till, there's a lot of stuff that you took on your way there. Because why? You don't have the spirit of discipline. You just walk into the shop, you just want to buy everything. No discipline. You understand? Read that again, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 12. Come on. If thou sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it, and mm -hmm. say not, there is much meat on it. Read. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. Hold on. Wait, wait. What did he say? Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. He says, remember. He says, remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. Hold this. Sarah 14 verse 10 again. An evil eye, a wicked eye is an evil thing. So if you know that you cannot manage your food, your portions, you don't know how to do food portion control, you have a wicked eye. And that's an evil thing in the sight of the most eye. Read that. Sarah 14 verse 10. Come on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 14, verse 10. Read. A wicked eye envieth his bread. Mm -hmm. And he is a niggard at his table. Now, you notice something about that verse. You see there's a square bracket there in his. It says, a wicked eye envieth his bread. The square bra bracket is actually caps lock. It's emphasis. Meaning you are envying your own bread. You're, you envy your own food. Here you are, you have food on your plate, but you eat like somebody's going to come and take it from you. You envy your own food, so you eat like a pig. You can't help yourself. And once you're done, because you are eating so quickly, you don't take time to chew your food, and then you don't feel full because your stomach has not gotten, the stomach has not woken up to the fact that there's so much food in my stomach. Guess what? You go back, you want some more food. You understand? You want some more. By the time you get up, your stomach is so tight. You understand? Because guess what? You envy your own bread. He is a nigger at his table, not somebody else's. Go back to Sarak now. 31, verse 13. Read what you got. Come on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 31, verse 13. Come on. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. A wicked eye is an evil thing because they, he envies his own bread and he's a niggard at his table. Meaning what? Le homo cha. Go ahead. And what is created more wicked than an eye? What is, what is, he says, what is created more wicked than an eye? Because what does your eye do? Give me that in First John. Okay. First John 2.16. Because I give you have not made a covenant with your eyes. So that's why now when you see stuff, you walk into the shop, there's all this food. You just buy what you just want to buy everything. You, you're not satisfied if you go to the shops, you walk out, you are not chewing, your lips are not moving. Something wrong. You go into the shop, you when you go out, you must be chewing something. Or when you're on your way, you must be chewing something. Like a cow. You know, a cow is always grazing on something. You understand? Read. First John 2:16. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Read. For all that is in the world, the mm. last of the flesh, the and what? the last of the eyes, the last of the flesh. Because your flesh will always be lasting if you don't get your spirit in check. If you don't have discipline, your flesh, when it lasts for something, you're going to go after the lusts of your flesh and you will fulfill them. Go ahead. And the last of the eyes. The eyes. That's what Sirach is saying here. It says, and what is created more wicked than an eye? Because guess what? Your eye is also lasting. You look, you last. Once you, when you last, you want to fulfill the last. Guess what? You buy that. Even if you don't need it, but because you are halal, you can't help yourself, you go and get it. Go ahead. And the pride of life. And the pride of life, meaning what? When you leave the, you ever seen those people? Um... They leave the, the, the shop, right? They leave the, whether it's shop, right? Pick and pay and all of that. The, the trolley is so packed. It's like a heap. And they, 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 they feel so proud. But when you, because, but the people, people don't look at it with spiritual eyes. 
So now that we have the Lord has given us spiritual eyes, when you look at the trolley, although it's packed, when you look in that trolley, it's just garbage in there. But those that are blinded, when they look at it, they say, yo, month end. We used to see that. Okay, come on. And the pride of life is not mm. of the Father. That's but not of the Lord. Is of the world, of Satan. You understand? The spirit of courage is where there's no discipline. You don't have breaks. You don't have to deny your flesh for nothing. You just indulge yourself in that. Okay? Go back to Sarah 31, verse 13 again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 13. Read. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. Mm -hmm. And what is created more wicked than an eye? Read. Therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion. It weepeth, meaning what? You covet upon everything. Everything you see, you just want to buy. You go to the shops. Mm, yes, like I'm, I'm craving some damn. Uh, yes, like no, man, I want something sweet. You go there, you get it. Okay. Once you get that sweet thing, your, your, your appetite, that, that relin uh, hormone is activated now. Now you need to go something fat, something fatty. It's a whole science. You go to the shops, you want, you get something sweet. Before you know it, now you want to eat McDonald's, you want to eat Nando's, you want to, like all of that stuff. You understand? You know, Nando's is different because it's grilled and stuff like that. But things like KFC, you see, uh, chicken legging, that deep fried stuff, uh, fish and chips, you understand? The rashin and all of that nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, keep going. Stretch not thine hand whithersoever it looketh, mm. and trust it not with him into the dish. So the Lord is saying, stretch, stretch not thine hand whithersoever it looketh. Because your hand doesn't see. Your hand doesn't look. Your eyes are lasting. Your hand follows, follows upon what you're lasting on. You see that thing? It says, stretch not thine hand whithersoever it looketh. Your hand doesn't have eyes, but because you have a covetous eye, you have an evil eye. Your eyes are lasting after these things. Your hand is going to fall away. Your eyes are lasting after. That's what he's saying. Okay, come on. And do what? And, and trust, not. trust it. And trust it not with him into the dish. Meaning what? Now you are fighting with... You, are, you ever seen in the shops where people are being... People want to buy things? You see something you want to buy. Somebody else also, they are seeing the same thing. People be rushing to get it. They be fighting. I've seen people fight in the grocery store, in the shops. Go spa. Go pig and pay. No, give only pay. <laughs> Unbelievable. Keep going. Judge of thy neighbor by eh? thyself. Now nah, that's it on that. Read verse 16. Jump down to verse 16. Watch this. Eat as it becometh a man. Mm. Those things which are set before thee. And devour not, lest thou be hated. It says, eat as it becometh a man. Those things which are said before thee. Whether you go to the shops, grocery, whether you go to the uh, food court, whether you go to the crispy creams and all of that. It says, it says what? Eat as it becometh a man. Those things which are said before thee. There's a food on the table that needs to be eaten. Don't be, don't be like, don't be like a that's what they call it in paid le romoja. You, you just want to just gamble everything. You understand? It says, and devour not lest thou be hated. Now, why, why would the Lord say, eat as it becometh a man? Now, let's think now. Eat as it becometh a man. So if you eat on your plate, right? And... The, the, the plate, the food on your plate is bigger than your head. You are not eating as it becometh a man. That means you are something else. You are not a man no more. You, you basically, you've jumped out of the, the, if I can call the human realm. Now you are something else. Meaning a, a man will eat, will, will be liberal with his meat. But somebody that is not a man, which is you are something else, you are a beast now, like a cow. Cow just be eating. 
You understand? A dog, just be eating. Dogs don't have a war. Pigs, they just keep eating until. You see the stomach be so huge. Mm -hmm. Because now you've jumped out of this, the, you've jumped out of the, the quote-unquote um, mankind race, because that's the biblical term, mankind. You've jumped out of that. Now you are into beast mode. You understand? That's heavy right there. Okay, read again verse 16. Ecclesiasticus chapter 31, verse 16. Read. Eat as it becometh a man. Read. Those things which are said before thee and devour not, lest thou be hated. Because people are going to hate you because you have a covetous spirit. You can't, you, you, what do they call it? You don't have bedside manners. You don't have, you don't have breaks. Hmm? Keep going. Verse 17. Leave all first for men are sake. Meaning what? Here's the food. Your, your hand, you, know, you remember like Judas? Judas had a covetous spirit. Because let's get that real quick. Now that's heavy. That's some heavy stuff. Matthew 26. Watch this. When they were eating the Passover meal. Okay. M Matthew 26 and verse 23. Watch this. Matthew chapter 26 verse 23. Go ahead. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, mm -hmm. the same shall betray me. You see that thing? Judas had a covetous spirit. He dipped his hand the same time when Christ was, he was eating also. He didn't wait for his master. He had a covetous spirit. Look at it. Read it again. Verse 23. Matthew chapter 26, verse 23. Go ahead. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. So Judas, what he did is he did not he did not leave off for manner's sake. No, he had a covetous spirit. He couldn't help himself. So when Christ dipped his hand into the into the dish, he also did it the same time when Christ was doing it. He didn't wait for his master to eat first. No. He wanted to eat even before his master. That was the mindset. So let's go back. Now we understand the context. Sarag 31, verse 17 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 17. Read. Leave off first for men's sake, mm -hmm. and be not unsatiable, lest thou offend. Meaning don't be uncontrollable, lest you offend. You understand? Sarag 18, verse 30. We're coming back here. Sarag 18. Verse 30. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 30. Come on. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. He says, don't go after your lusts, because your, your body, your flesh is always lusting after things. He says, but refrain yourself from thine appetite. Because in order for you to shut down those cravings, you understand? When you, that's why you, when you have a smoothie, right, you mix all these veggies, vegetables and fruits. Listen, I'm speaking for me. From my experience, I know I never have those things if I have a smoothie. If I have a smoothie, I don't have, you know, these uh, demonic cravings. I don't have that. Because I make sure that in, the smooth, in my smoothie, you know, I put things that I know that they are going to shut down all those cravings. Strawberry is one, big, is one of the biggest ones. It's good. Strawberry is good, especially these berries. Strawberry, goji berry, raspberry, blackberries, and all that. They are very good with that. High in antioxidants and all that. Yes. So when you are making your smoothie, always have that because it's going to help to, to, to manage your... Because the cravings, they come about because you are, you are chemically, there's an imbalance in your chemical, in, in your system, chemically. There's an imbalance. That's why when we were going over the eat to live class, you have to make a lifetime choice, meaning this is a lifestyle change. Be born again. Be converted. You understand? You have to make healthy choices because in the back of your mind is, I want to be healthy from the chemical level. Your, 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 chemist, your body chemistry must change. You understand? Then it's gonna be able to you're gonna you're gonna be able to manage 
your appetites. Read that again, verse 30. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. He says, refrain yourself from your appetite. Come on. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her. The desires. She... You see that part right there? If you give your soul the desires that please her, guess what's going to happen? Go ahead. She will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. You see that your desires, your appetites, your lusts, he says they are going to make you a laughing stock before your enemies that what? That have a malicious intent to destroy you. You understand? Go back now. Sarak 31. Sarak 31 and verse 17 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Leave off first for men's sake. Come on. And be not unsatiable, lest thou offend. This is be not unsatiable, lest thou, lest thou offend. Come on. When thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. You see what he's saying? If you're sitting among many, the congregation, in the world, wherever, he says, don't reach your hand out first of all, like Judas did. You understand? He said, don't do that. Watch this. Let's deal with that part when it says unsatiable. Mm, I think it's in Sarak 37. Give me Sarak 37 verse 29. Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. That's sweet things. Remember how Esau does it? The food porn that we're explaining, we're reading about. So you've got high sugar stuff. You've got high fatty stuff. So the high sugar stuff, your crispy cream and all of that stuff, your ice creams and all that, they activate your appetite by 25%. You understand? Now he's going to lead you. Once you consume that, now you need something fatty and salty. That's what that means. So it says, don't be and be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, meaning sweet things. Because guess what? The Lord knows what it will do. Watch the next part of that verse. What we just read in the food porn, the Lord is explaining it here. Watch this. Nor too greedy upon meat. Nor too greedy upon meat. Because from the dainty thing, where do our people go? They go to, they go to chicken licking. They want hot wings. They go to KFC. They want streetwise. They want the bucket. Hmm? If it's not a pizza boxy that has got three pizzas in it, it's the bucket here KFC. You see, that's how we, that's, the, the Lord is telling us right here. I was, that's why I was explaining the scenario when our people go to the malls and all of that's what they do they buy grocery then they go and buy crispy cream and they say okay i'm come and collect they take the slip they go to chicken licking they buy hot wings hot wings number seven hot wings number 12 i guess they've got numbers hot wings number whatever a family meal is all hot wings you understand so the lord is telling us don't do that read again verse 29 ecclesiasticus chapter 37 verse 29 Ray? Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, mm -hmm. nor too greedy upon meat. Nor too greedy upon meat, because the dainty thing, the dainty things, these sweet stuff, they're going to make you to be greedy upon meat, because you're going to be buying these hot wings number 12 and all that. Ray? For excess of meat bringeth sickness. Because excess of meat will bring sickness because the cravings of meat and all of that will be high because of these dainty things. For excess of meat bringeth sickness. Now you're going to get sick. Gout, okay, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, you understand? High blood pressure, all of that, right? And suffering will turn into cholera. With will turn into cola. Now you're going to be having stomach issues now. You understand? And suffering, meaning what? Eating too much will, call, will turn into cola. And then you're going to have stomach issues. You understand? Stomach, uh, now you, you are making your stomach difficult to operate. That's why after you eat, you just want to sleep immediately. Because when your stomach is digesting food, it's drawing too much blood from the rest of your body to digest the food that you just consume like a pig. 
after you eat, you just be dozing off. You want to sleep now. You understand? Why? Because you eat like a like a cow. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 31. Watch this. By suffering have many perished. That's the what that's the that's the punishment for it. By suffering, meaning what? Lack of self-control, too much excess of food consumption. It says what? Many have, have many perished, meaning they died. You understand? Read. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. He that taketh heed to what? Go back to Sarah 30, verse 25. He that taketh heed, he taketh heed to what? Read that. Sarah 30, verse 25. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 25. Go ahead. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. You're going to take heed to your meat and diet, how you eat and how much you eat. You understand? Sarah 31, verse 23. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 23. Read. Whoso is liberal of his meat, man shall speak well of him. Mm -hmm. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. The good housekeeping is what? You having, you taking heed to your meat and diet. You understand? You're going to take heed and you're going to prolong your life. You live longer. Your, your body is not meant to be just be grazing 24 hours a day. You understand? He's not meant for that. That's why on the Sabbath, why do you think the Lord on the Sabbath says, don't cook? You understand? Don't be cooking. Don't, you shall kindle no fire on the Sabbath day. Because the Lord wants to keep you less busy. You understand? That's why he's saying, don't be, don't kindle fire on the Sabbath. Because for cooking and all of course, you're going to be cooking, brying and all of that. No, the Lord is doing that so that what? Because I get the food is going to be cold and all of that, you don't have to be cooking nothing. And the food you're going to make, because you're not going you're not gonna to have a lot of food on the Sabbath, that's the point. The Lord is trying to give you, your body a break. Anybody get that? Yes, sir. That's why the Lord is doing that. So that you don't be sitting, standing by the stove, briar, and all of that. He's giving your body a break, because you're not, you're, you're not, mad. that's why there's fast days that are implemented, so you fast. You give your body a break. You understand? Watch this. Sarak 31. Sarak 31 and verse 19 now. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 19. Go ahead. A very little is sufficient for a man well-natured. Mm. And he fetched not his wind shot upon his bed. So he says, a very little is sufficient. A very little. Because a very little, because you might be thinking, that means I must eat the food as, as big as my fist. No, he's talking about with a very little, you must take into account, Pat. Because you see, uh, Negroes, do, we don't think about this stuff. Give me Sarak 38 so we can explain it. Sarak 38 and verse 4. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38, verse 4. Come on. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. So these medicines that the Lord created out of the earth is talking about what? Give me Genesis 129. These are the medicines that the Lord created out of the earth. Watch this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Read. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So the Lord is giving us a vegan diet here at this point. Now, what, what I want to show you is that these medicines that the Lord created out of the earth, that's your fruits and your veggies and all that, he made those things so that, why? Go back to Sarah 31, verse 19 again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 31, verse 19. All right. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and mm -hmm. he fetched not his wind shot upon his bed. So a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Nurtured. So this very little that will be sufficient is gonna be what? Is gonna be is gonna be good for a man that is well nurtured. 
Because what's supposed to nurture you? Nutrients. Because I get when you eat food, there's nutrients in the food that's supposed to nurture you. You understand? So that very little, it goes into what? The food you have, it must be what? It must be a balanced diet. Meaning you must have the things that the body needs. Because whatever you eat, the body is not dealing with quantity. No, the body is dealing with quality. What you eat, the body will only, the, your system only extracts nutrients in whatever you eat. The body is not looking at the amount that you are eating. No, it's looking at the quality of the food you are eating. What nutrients are in the food you are eating? So you find that you are in the plate, you don't, there is just garbage. So that's why is not going to be sufficient for you. You keep going for more because your body is not satisfied, not because it wants quantity, no, because the body, your body needs quality. It needs nutrients, minerals. So if you eat food that doesn't have those things, you're gonna keep going back to for seconds and thirds and fourth and so on and so forth. Anybody get that? All praises, sir. Okay, read verse 19 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 19. Read. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetcheth not his wind shot upon his bed. He fetcheth not, he fetcheth not. Meaning what? Loku Pizia Souza. Oh my God, <laughs> man. You are sleeping, Loku Pizia, just, just like a bomb just went off. Hmm? You understand? You just be farting the whole night. So, guess what? This goes in, you see, this prepares, this is preparation for those that are going to get married. So, you brothers, you better get this right. We don't want your wife coming to complain. He says, I can't sleep the whole night. Okay? They just be Iraq. World War I just be going on. We don't want to hear those stories. Okay? Sisters too. We don't want to hear them stories. No, we don't want to hear that. And for you to prevent all that, you must learn how to do this. You must apply this scripture right here. You understand? You must apply this scripture right here. Read it again, verse 19. Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 19. Mm -hmm. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, really? and he fetcheth not his wind shot upon his bed. He fetcheth not his wind shot upon his bed. Now, this is go this portion, right? This is portion control, right here. So she's going over portion control. Start doing videos tailored to you guys. Um, achieving your goals, whether you're trying to lose more weight, whether you're trying to slim your waistline down, trying to break a plateau, or just overall trying to be more healthy. And this video is going to be about proportion control. Diet is the most important thing when it comes to weight loss and staying healthy, period, because your body needs nutrition. And the best way to do that is to first select foods that have a low calorie um, intake. Fruits, vegetables, proteins, and then there are some fats out there. But if you put more of these foods into your diet, it would be a lot better for you. It'll be a lot easier for you to deal with proportion control because I don't count calories. I do not count macros. I don't do all of those different things. I just do not count them because this for me is a lifestyle. And I always have time. To you, know what, you know what's good about this? It's good that the sister is doing it. You understand? Because if men are saying it, they're going to be saying, you know, you are massaging it. Yeah, that's what they say. Because they don't want to be told about themselves. You say you are fat. You see, they, they, there's even subliminal messages when you watch movies. A man will be afraid to tell his wife that, you know, babe, you know, you are fat. Yeah, that dress don't fit you. He has to just be very clever on how he puts it. He's working in eggshells about this. So from the movies into the house. You see that? Now the prophets are here. We're going to bring it out the way it is. We are not having nothing. To measure every little thing. And it makes um, dieting, or not dieting, but eating healthy, not as fun. Just pick things that are good for your body. Fruits, vegetables, 
and proteins that are of a selection for you and you should be fine. Now, even with the good stuff, you don't want to eat too much of it in one sitting. You should eat at least three to six meals a day. It all depends on your activity level and yeah. You see, the key is, he says, don't eat everything all at once. You understand? Don't go into peak mode. For me, it's about four to five. It used to be six because I would have smaller proportions for each meal, but now lifestyle and things have changed. Now I'm down to like four to five. And I use this plate. Use a small plate. Mm, use a small plate, okay? Small plate for your food. Eat as it becomes a man. Read that part again in Sarah 31. Sarah 31 and verse 16. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 16. Read. Eat as it becometh a man. Mm -hmm. Those things which are set before thee and devour not, lest thou be hated. You see what he's saying? He says, eat as it becometh a man. The minute you start to eat, a plate that is like Mount Zion. Listen, now you are no longer becoming a man. Now you are a beast now. You understand? You go into cow, pig, hyena, so on as elephant, a hippo. This plate is about the size of my hand. So that might help. And your hand is a good um, way to keep things down to a size so that you're not feeling bloated, you're not feeling full, because our stomachs aren't that large. But it would definitely help to shrink it down. So it's gonna take some time, but if you try this for the next 30 days, you'll be amazed at how easier it actually becomes. But yeah, I always make sure I have a vegetable, I always make sure I have some kind of protein and some kind of carbohydrates, mostly earlier in the day. And I try to keep all three of those items the size of my fist. And that helps me out the most. And I can fit all three of those fists into this plate. But I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an example of the proportion difference between my plate and my husband's plate, a clip really quickly on the differences and how um, it can help. All right, so here you see both of our plates and as mentioned earlier, you see my plate is the size of my hand open. And funny enough, his plate is the size of his hand open as well. And even his proportion size is good for him as well. But as you notice here, I try to keep all three of my items, even if I'm eating some kind of processed food as well, I try to keep it the size of my fist. So that, give me that drug 31, verse 19 again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 19. Read. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Mm -hmm. And he fetched not his wind shot upon his bed. So that very little that is sufficient, it, it, it goes into what? It goes into the nutrients of the food you eat. Because it's going to be sufficient for you. Meaning what? You're going to give your body what your body needs. Not what you want, but what your body needs. So when the body, when, the, when your system is extracting nutrients, that's what actually makes you full. The nutrients. You understand? It is the exact same thing for him to keep him healthy as well, the size of his fist. So after this, I'm actually going to show you a, another example that would probably help as well if you have certain table settings or things like that. Um, that way you guys will get an idea of what kind of plate you could be using. This is a an average table setting. You have your dinner plate, you have your salad plate, or yeah, your salad plate, and then you have your bowl, and then you have a saucer and a teacup. So this is usually the average table setting. I would say keep these for desserts. Try to avoid cakes, chips, pops, all that junk food. Just try to avoid it as much as you can. But if you just have to have it, keep it at one of these two 
um, proportion sizes. So you don't have to fill up this cup with ice cream, you don't have to fill up this plate with cake, but this would help to uh, bring that proportion size down. This bowl and this salad plate should be for all three to four of your meals. Avoid a dinner plate. It's too long. Yes, stay away from that plate like this. You brothers here that stay away from that big thing. Stay away from it. Yes, sir. You brothers get that? Stay away from that dinner plate. Stay away yes, from that. Get that small one. Okay? Get that smaller one. Stay away from snacks. Stay away from these dainty things, which will lead you to go to chicken licking and buy deep fried uh, you know, red wings. Yeah, that is you're too tempted to put more food on it and then you'll be eating more than your body necessarily needs keep in mind we do not need a lot of calories in our diet in each setting or meal so try to keep it small eat all three of your foods your vegetables protein and carbs and fill it up in a bowl of this size or a salad plate and that makes it a lot easier for you. All right, guys, that was it. Um, I hope. Um, give me, go back to Sarah 31, verse 19. Read that again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 19. Read. Right. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, mm -hmm. and he fetched not his wind short upon his bed. You see that thing? Come on, verse 20. Read. Right. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Stop right there. It's a sound sleep cometh of moderate eating, meaning what? You are liberal of your meat. Because if you are not liberal of your meat, you don't know how to manage your portion sizes, is because you are a niggard at your table. You envy your own food. As if somebody else is going to get it. You don't have the spirit of discipline. So you are covetous. You worship food. Food is your God, is your idol. You understand? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 20. Right. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Okay, I need you to put some power in your reading. Okay, read verse 20 again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verse 20. Read. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Read. He rises early and his wits are with him. Meaning your mind, you meaning what? Your wits are with you. You understand? You don't, you're not feeling sluggish and all that. Sound sleep. You sleep well when you eat moderately. You eat as it becometh a man. You don't wake up feeling like you got hit by a bus because you don't eat well. You'll be having evil dreams. You've been chased by a, a monkey, a hyena. Yes, it's because of the, the you don't eat correctly. You understand? You're always having dreams about food. That's how, that's how deep it goes. The Lord is trying to get your attention. You still don't get it. You have been having dreams about food. You are hungry. You are in a buffet. You understand? You have a piece of chicken on one hand. You have a pizza on the other. Listen, no, those are not good dreams. The Lord is telling you, that's what he's telling you. Read it again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 20. Come on. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Mm -hmm. He rises early and his wits are with him. Come on. But the pain of watching and cola, meaning and stomach pain issue. Pain. You see, pain of watching and cola. This cola goes into diarrhea as well, or bloating. Okay, come on. Ah, uh, and pangs of the belly are with an insatiable man. Meaning what? You are you don't have self control when it comes to that. Are uh, with an insatiable man. You don't have control. You don't have to. You don't know how to discipline yourself. You understand? Come on, read verse 21. And if thou has been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have rest. So you see what the Lord is saying? He says, if you eat like a pig, he says, go out, go and vomit this food. And you know what? Ne? Some of you, you can't do it. You know why you can't vomit that food? Because you don't chew the food. So if you have to go out and vomit, it's going to be chunks of food coming out. Think about it. 
because the body has not digested the food yet. So if you have to go and vomit the food, it's going to be a whole Nando's chicken coming out. You understand? A whole thigh just be popping out. A whole wing of chicken liquid popping out. You understand? So you won't do it because you don't want to choke while you're trying to get the food to go out. Because you don't chew the food. You just put it in your mouth, you swallow. And you know Coca-Cola. You understand? Because you would think the Coca-Cola will push it down. The stomach will see what to do with it. That's the mindset. Read that verse again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 21. Read. And if thou hast been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have rest. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have rest. If you do that, then you're going to have rest. Next verse, come on. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee. Meaning what? You, if, if It says, hear me and despise me not. Because when people corrected about their weight, their food, how they eat and all, they get upset. But in the end, they want to discover the consequences of not listening to that counsel. Go ahead. In and all thy works. In all thy works, your works is you keeping God's commandments. You understand? If you read 2nd Ezra 7 verse 21, I believe. No, verse 24. Let's read that. 2nd Ezra 7, 21. I mean 24. 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. But his law have they despised mm -hmm. and denied his covenant. Read. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. Have not performed his work. His covenant, his statutes, and his commandments, we despised it. We didn't perform the meaning we did not apply. So go back to where he was at. Sarah 31, verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 22. Mm -hmm. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee. In Read. all thy works, be quick. In all thy works, oh. in all thy works, well hold on, it says, in all thy works, be quick. It's twofold. Be quick meaning what? Make haste. Also meaning change. Remember, it says, is the God of the quick, is the spirit that quickeneth, changes you. So the laws of God are supposed to quicken you. Okay, come on. So shall there no sickness come unto thee. Meaning what? No sickness. So there is, the Lord is telling us why our people get sick is because they don't know how to eat. That's why our people get sick. Big stomachs, big bumps. You understand? Men boobs. All of that is because of what? That's a sickness. That's an example of sickness. It's not because, because a lot of the time they say, no, they, because the sister's got a big stomach, she's fat, you understand? She's like that Oro's bottle, that Oro's man that you see on the, on the picture of Oro. You ever seen the Oro's bo bottle? Oro's. They say, mm, I know, which means life is good, yeah. You know, she just got married. You see how she's looking now? No, no, mm -mm. That's not an example of you are you are that's not an example of of happiness. It's not. It's not an example of happiness because in South Africa, I think 46% of our of we of women, you understand? I'm talking about the black community. 46% they are obese. 13% of men, they are obese. 13%. You understand? Give me Jeremiah 31, 22. 46%. Of our sisters are overweight. Jeremiah chapter 31. Can I get the verse 7? Verse 22. Jeremiah 31, 22. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. Come on. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Mm. A woman shall compass a man. It says a woman shall compass a man. Meaning the women are going to be, they're going to, they're going to, oh, they're going to compass the man. Today, 
it go it not it not only does it go into women want to be equal or above the men no it also goes into weight even in weight these women are compassing the men in weight so as a sister you cannot weigh more than a man but today the black women they weigh more than their black men you see this tiny guy with this, this big with, with big shirley this big woman you understand like a sumo she's like a sumo wrestler you ever seen a sumo wrestler Mm -hmm. Yes. Bigger. When you're having an, an argument, she'll just be throwing you all over the table, the kitchen and all that. Chest bumping you, punching you. And if she sits on you, I forget it, yeah. You're dead. Okay? Because she weighs more than you. The average weight of a woman in South Africa is 60 kg. The average weight of a healthy male is 70.1 kg. But read that part again. A woman shall what? A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man, even in weight. You understand? That's why today when you see a family, the woman is bigger than the man. And what I'm noticing also is that the man, you, you find that the man is exercising, they are going to the gym. The woman doesn't want to, she's lazy. She doesn't want to go and exercise. And when the husband says, babe, you know, you need to exercise and all of that, share off the baby weight, make sure you are healthy. Because a lot of the times you find that these women, because they say they don't want men in their life, they hate men, I'm independent. Guess what? They have, they have other women advising them. Those other women will tell me, don't worry, you know, you, you, you are, you're going to take care of the baby by yourself. Don't worry, we're going to help you. We're going to support you. Eat the ice cream. You want to eat the ice cream by yourself? Finish the whole tub. You want to eat the whole pizza? Don't worry, we got you, girl, and all that. That's what they do. Now she's pregnant, because remember, when you're pregnant, you put on weight. So if you're already overweight, then you fall pregnant, what are the chances of you having complications in your pregnancy? The chances are very high. That's why you see these kids coming out, they are so big. Not because no, 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 they're, they're healthy, no, because they are fed. A newborn baby is so big because of the fed, because of the mother, because she was not taking care of herself. So they have high-risk pregnancies. You find that they say no, and guess what? Esau likes that because Esau will do a C-section because that's what they push for, to do population control, C-section. That's what they were doing in Egypt. They were not doing C-section, but they say it was a male, kill them. If it's a girl, keep them alive. That's what they're doing today, raising the women above the men. So because you cannot push that baby out, it's too big, and you are also overweight, Esau will say, no, this, you cannot push the baby out naturally. We have to do a C-section and cut the baby out. Once you do your first C-section, it's very difficult to do natural, the second one. You understand? Hmm. Give me the book of Isaiah now. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 3. Because like I mentioned that um, as a people, you know what, before we get that, give me Proverbs 20 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 23. I'll get to Isaiah in a minute. Proverbs 20 verse 23. Let's read that. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 23. Read. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord. Diverse weights. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord. Because you are disproportionate. You've got a big stomach. You understand? Big bum, big thighs. And they be wearing these tight dresses. I don't know what they're thinking, the sister. I don't know what the sisters be thinking. I'm getting on the sisters because 46% of you, you are overweight. That's the stats. You can't dispute that. 13% of men, they are obese. 13%. Mzans. Okay. So, read that part again. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 23. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord. Come on. And a false balance is not good. So, obesity is not is an abomination unto the Lord. Diverse weights. Could your body is is your 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 skeleton is really like a, um you are basically what's 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 the term how do i put it your body 
you understand, is heavier. Your, you go to your, your body is more heavier because of what? Because of the stuff you eat, because of the fatty stuff, because of the high sugar diet that you have, because of the fizzy drinks, the Coca-Cola, the Fanta, okay, little, little grape, whatever. So you drink and eat those, those stuff. Now you, 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 are, you are overpowering your, 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 your torso. That's why you see our people, there are people behaving things like arthritis because the joints, they are overworking. For you to move from point A to point B, you, listen, it's a mission. Your body is really like a, it's under heavy distress because why? Because of diverse weights. You've got big arms. They be flapping in the wind. You understand? Big stomach, big thighs and all of that. So diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord and a false balance is not good. That false balance is your weight. It's just, that's not good. If you're overweight, that's not good. Diverse weights is not good. You must be proportional. And that takes diet and exercise. Diet and exercise will help with these diverse weights, which are an abomination unto the Lord. I'm going to give an example, right? Because remember, we read in Wisdom of Solomon, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon. So obesity is a sin. It's an abomination unto the Lord. It's not good in the sight of the Most High. Wisdom of Solomon 14, okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 12. Read. Right? For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication mm -hmm. and the invention of them, the corruption of life. The invention of these idols that they've come up with, they've devised, it says what? The corruption of life. So now this goes into what? Idol worship, worshiping of self and worshiping of men. Watch this. Give me, I'm going to show you like what are, our people, they, what they envy the other nations is because of envy. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Judges. I'm going to give an example with this Moabite. Judges. Give me Judges chapter 3, verse 15. Judges 3. We're going to read Judges down. chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised you know them. At Start at verse 14. Start at verse 14. Judges chapter 3, verse 14. Go ahead. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. The king of who? The king of Moab. The king of Moab. So that's the Chinese. Go ahead. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer. Ehud, the son of Ehud. Er Ehud. Ehud. Come on. Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. Come on. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. So they sent a present to Eglon, this, this Moabite king. Come on, watch this. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges mm. of a cubit length, and he did bear it under his raiment upon his right thigh. Read. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. Eglon was what? And Eglon was a very fat man. So Eglon was a very fat man. He was a very fat man. Watch this. Go. Let me share my screen real quick. And brothers too, don't get it twisted. There it is, right? That's a sumo wrestler. This is Eglon. That's Eglon right there, okay? Yes, he was just like this. A very fat man, Eglon. Read that part again, verse 17. Judges, chapter 3, verse 17. Read. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. He was a very fat man. Jump down to verse 22. Start, read verse 21. Let's read verse 21. So Ehad is going to put this uh, Moabite to death. But watch this. Verse 21 and 22. 
21. And Ehad put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust mm -hmm. it into his belly. He, th he thrust that dagger into his, into his belly. Watch this, come on. And the haft also went in after the blade. So the, he said the haft. So the haft of the blade, it also went into the belly of the sumo wrestler. Come on. And the fat closed upon the blade. Mm, the fat. You see, they're making emphasis. That's how fat he was. So imagine he stabbed his belly and the blade went into the belly and the haft also was closed up by the fat. So all that big, all that, all, all those things that, all that stomach that is flabby, that flabby gut, those flabby man boobs, okay? It was all fat. Read. Really? So that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. Mm -hmm. And the dirt came out. The dead came out. The dead, it goes into the waste. But the dead that, the dead that comes out today and back then, get in Nando's. Hmm? Kitty chicken licking. Kitty, kitty already KFC. Mm -hmm. That's what's coming out. And the dead came out. A big, a full chicken just came out. That's what I said. Some of our people, they cannot vomit this stuff out because a whole chicken will come out. You understand? A whole pig. I get they eat pig, they eat shrimp. A whole shrimp will just pop out. They won't do it. Chunks. Hmm? Read that part again, verse 22. Judges chapter 3, verse 22. Go ahead. And the haft also went in after the blade. Mm -hmm. And the fat closed upon the blade. Really? So that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. Uh -huh. And the dirt came out. The Nando's little chicken licking, the, 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 uh, those hot wings. Uh -huh. Hot wings number 12. That's them. The dirt came out. That's what this is going into right here. You understand? Now, give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. Okay. Isaiah 58 and verse 3. Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 3. Go ahead. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. So now the Lord was complaining about it because we were saying, so why did we fast? Because we, we, we were saying that the Lord, we are fasting and the Lord is not uh, beholding the fact that we are humbling ourselves. But we were not doing it correctly. You understand? We are afflicting our souls, but we were taking no knowledge. It says in the, that's why it says, behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. You'll still be doing your own things. You understand? You are not humbling yourself and separating yourself from the lust of your flesh. Okay, jump down to verse 6. Verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen? Now the Lord is going to tell you the fast that he wants. Come on. To lose the bands of wickedness. Meaning what? To lose that big fried chicken. Must lose it. Okay. To lose the band of wickedness. Meaning what? Stay away from that um, full chicken. Okay. Come on. To undo the heavy burdens. The heavy burdens is those big uh, portions that you put on your plate. Undo the heavy burdens. Eat small portions. Okay, come on. And to let the oppressed go free. To let the oppressed go free. Because now, what's oppressing you? The big portions on the big plate that you, they are, you are oppressed by your own food. Because I give you have an evil eye towards your plate. Though that food, that those huge portions, they are oppressing you. Go ahead. And that you break every yoke. You must break every yoke of wickedness, the bands of wickedness, you understand, which is what? The food you eat, the amount of food you eat. Okay, Mount Kilimanjaro on the plate. Go ahead. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and you that thou that bring... The... Hold on. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? How are you going to deal your bread to the hungry if you hmm? How are you going to do that? It says, is not to deal thy bread to the hungry because you're not going to be able to because you don't have the bread. 
agree you eat everything on the plate. How are you going to feed the hungry? Go ahead. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. You see that thing? How You're not going to bring the poor to your house because you are a niggard at the table. You understand? Read. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. Because you are so big now, you understand? There's no, the, 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 the clothes you have in the house, you cannot share with anyone. Because now you've got this oversized, you've got these big oversizes. Everything is just extra, extra, extra large. They're, they're hungry. Guess what? They are not big. So they're not going to fit in those clothes you've got. You see this thing? Go ahead. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Don't hide yourself from your own people. Because guess what? I grew up with take a leg. Now you are hiding yourself from your people because you are ashamed of how you look. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. So now when you and... fast, hold on, because this goes into fasting. But I'm trying to show you how to apply with the context of what we are going over. It says, but it says, then shall thy light break, thy light will break forth as the moon, meaning your understanding. When you fast, you will receive understanding of the scriptures. You understand? Your light, meaning your understanding will break forth as the morning. Because it's gonna when the sun goes out, it's beautiful. Like it's like it says in Sarah. Let's read that. So I don't butcher it. Okay. Mm. I believe it's Sarah three that talks about the beauty of a wife. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, isn't that uh, 36, sir? No, no, Sarah 26, verse 16. Read that. 26. 26, 26 verse 16. Chapter 26, verse 16. Go ahead. As the sun, when it arises in the high heaven, mm. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. You see what he's saying? He says, as the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. Because it's beautiful to behold when it goes out. The sun, sunrise, beautiful. Okay, so guess what? Your understanding also will be like that. Beautiful to behold. Because the people will see your understanding coming from you. Okay, go ahead, go back. So, uh, Isaiah 58 verse 8 again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, mm. and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Stop right there. It says, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Your health is going to spring forth speedily. We read it earlier in, in, in Sirach 31. Okay. We read it earlier. Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 31. Okay, Sarah chapter 31. Mm. Let me see which one I want. Give me one sec. Uh, read Sarah chapter 31 and verse, verse 22. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 31, verse 22. Read. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee. Mm -hmm. In all thy works be quick. So shall there no sickness come unto thee. They, so, shall they, so shall there be no sickness come unto thee. That's why it says, thine health shall spring forth speedily. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 37, verse 31. Sirach 37, verse 31. Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 31. Read. By suffering have many perished. Mm -hmm. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. If you take heed of your meat and diet, you are liberal upon your meat, you're going to prolong your life. Meaning what? The Lord will add to your life. You understand? Your health will spring forth speedily. Go back to Isaiah 58 verse 8. 
Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, mm -hmm. and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Read. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Because you are going to be rewarded again when we get the kingdom. But for us to get the kingdom, we must keep the commandments. You understand? That's why, like, when you fast, you are teaching your body to restrain yourself. You understand? You are teaching your spirit so you can restrain yourself. So likewise, when you eat less, meaning what? You eat as it becometh a man. Let me put it that way. Like the scripture says, you eat as it becometh a man, you're going to prolong your life because you want, you're going to have good health. And good health comes from gut health. You've got gut health. Good gut, your, your, your gut is healthy. You're going to be fine because you are what you eat. You understand? You are what you eat. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 15. Okay, because it is important to exercise. You understand? You must exercise. Come on. Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 15. Read. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Hmm. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Infinite, infinite. So health and good state of body. A good state of body is based upon what? You knowing how to manage your portions when you eat. You eat as it becometh a man. You are not greedy upon meats. You understand? You are not unsatiable. You don't like dainty things which will cause you to be eating all these deep fried stuff. Okay? High cholesterol. You understand? You, you end up having a heart attack. I remember there was a show that used to play on TV, Soul City. Every, any, everybody remember, anybody remember that show? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, the, the, that show, you know, later on, is, they started to show some, you know, it wasn't good anymore. But the beginning of it, oh, that show, that show was good. That was a good show right there, Soul City. That was a good show right there because they would, they would teach um, high blood pressure or way, how do you get it? They'll teach cholesterol, how do you get it and how to lower it and all of that. They teach exercise, you understand, eating healthy. They would, they would show all of that stuff. I remember there was, a, there was this man, I think he played on Easy Thing many years ago, Papa G, right? Dunning, Dunnington something, Dunnington Michael, that's his name, right? Yes, sir. They showed him there was an episode on Soul City. That was the beginning of the show. And he went to like, these Shisanyama places and he was eating chips. He was eating rations. He was eating fish. He was drinking beer. He was, listen, all sorts of garbage, right? To just, and guess what? He got a heart attack. And when he got to the hospital, they started to take his blood and all of that to see what's going on. They say, your cholesterol is high. You're not eating healthy. Stay away from this fatty, deep fried stuff. You see, that was a very good educational show. They just destroyed that show. You don't see it no more. You don't play anymore. Now you just see Bukanimba only the blonde hair looking like Barbie. The hell is this? Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 15. Read. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Read. And a strong body above infinite wealth. You see that thing? That's beautiful right there. And a strong body, health and good estate. Good as to maintain a good estate, you must be liberal upon your meat. You must have a good yard. He says, A good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Okay, come on. There is no riches above a sound body mm. and no joy above the joy of the heart. Because you see, there's no riches that is above a sound body, meaning what a healthy body, a strong and a healthy body, because you make healthy choices. Because why? You're living a healthy lifestyle. It's not a thing. It's a lifestyle change, like I was mentioning. You understand? So it says there are no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart because your mind is healthy. You're feeding the laws of God. You're disciplining your spirit, your flesh. You understand? You're applying God's commandment to your life. You're going to have joy. That's because you're, even your, that, that, those things, the chemical imbalance, they'll all disappear. Why? Because you're eating healthy. Your chemistry. Your body chemistry will change and so forth. Go ahead. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. 
So death is better, the Lord is saying. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. Read. Delicate. No, uh, no, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. Jump down to verse 22. Watch this. 22. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. Mm. And the joyfulness of a man prolongs his days. You see what he's saying? Gladness of the heart is the life of man. Because who gives us life? The Lord. That's a gift from the Most High. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. Because when you eat, because keep it in the context. How to eat, what to eat, when to eat. You understand? Keep going. Watch this. Verse 23 is the key. Love thine own soul. Mm -hmm. And comfort thy heart. So Remove what? sorrow. Wait, wait, wait. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. In order for you to, to prove that you love your own soul, you're going to have what? Read verse 25. So to, to just to, to prove what, what we just read in verse 23. Read verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 25. Come on. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. So a cheerful and a good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. And that's a proof that you love your own soul. Jump up to verse 23. 23. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. So you see that thing? So when you love your own, your, 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 when you love yourself, guess what? You're going to have your, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna mind the things you eat. You understand? And how much you eat. You're going to be very mindful of that. It says you're going to have a good care of your meat and your diet. So you're going to manage your portions. You're going to eat as it becometh a man. You're going to be very well nurtured. You're going to have a balanced diet. That's what I tell you, brothers and sisters, get a blender. In that blender, make a table of all the foods that, that of the nutrients that your body needs. How many of you have done that? Hello? I have, sir. I have. Oh, please. So, Brother Zolani has it. Brother Ntlantla has it. Oh, praise you. So the rest of you, you didn't do it. Hmm. Okay. So read that thing again. Verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 23. All this. You know what? Let me just mention this. You see, a lot of you brothers, ne? a lot of you brothers that are thin, okay, you know who you are. You are, you are a skinny fat person. What do I mean by that? You are a skinny fat person. So, you don't have that table to know what you are putting in your system. Because you can tell me, no, I know all the nutrients of the food I'm consuming because that would be a lie. You would have it already. So which means you are a skinny fat. You look skinny, but you are fat on the inside. Meaning what? Your cells are not healthy. Because I've seen people go to the gym, right? They look good on the outside, but on the inside, they are full of, they are, they're like a sepulcher. They are not healthy. Their cells are not healthy. You, you see what I'm saying? So I need you brothers to be mindful of that thing. Okay? Read that thing again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 23. Read. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. Comfort your heart, read. Remove sorrow far from thee. Because guess what? If you don't have your, a care of your meat and diet, you don't take care of how you eat and what you eat and all that, guess what? You know, you're going to have sorrow of heart. You understand? Sorrow of mind. Your mind is not going to operate correctly. The type of decisions you make will be a testament against you. Go ahead. For sorrow has killed many. Because sorrow is not necessarily means, oh, no, me, I'm not stressed about this. Me, I'm not, no, but your body is stressed because of how you feed it. Is stress, but when I agree, you don't see it. You are too clever. You don't see this thing. Go ahead. And there is no profit therein. It's not going to profit you because in the long run, it's going to prove that hmm, that Negro right there. Okay. So this joy, you when you love your own soul, you comfort your heart. You will comfort your heart with what? The Lord, what the Lord tells you, what to eat and how to eat. And guess what? This thing of comfort food, because, you know, comfort food is always this fatty and high sugar stuff. Okay, let's see what the scriptures say. Go to Song of Solomon. 
Go to Song of Solomon chapter, Song of Solomon chapter two, okay? Song of Solomon chapter two and verse, read verse four, start of verse three. Song of Solomon chapter two, verse three. Come on. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. Mm. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. And his fruit, his fruit, the apples, they will apple will be sweet to your taste. So get 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 some veggies. I mean some fruits. Apple will be sweet to your taste. You must comfort yourself with that. Go ahead. He brought me to the banqueting house, mm -hmm. and his banner over me was love. So now this is a beautiful love story. Of this is about Israel, by the way. This is marriage between the Lord and Israel. But read verse 5. Watch this. Stay with me with flagons. Flagons, these are raisins. Me. Hold on. Flagons are raisins. He says, stay me with flagons. Raisins, go ahead. Comfort me with apples. No, comfort me with crispy cream donut. Comfort me with apples. No, with pizza boxes. With a big pizza. Comfort me with apples. No, with hot wings from, non, from chicken leg. Comfort me with apples. Comfort me with apples. Go ahead. For I am sick of love. For I am sick of love. So you see what he's saying right there? So this comfort, comfort food. No, 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 no. Comfort food, let it not be um, pizza. Comfort food, let it not be this big, uh, big tub of ice cream. No. Comfort yourself with fruits and vegetables, nuts. Mm? Buy those type of things. And they are cheaper. You see, on the streets, they be selling these nuts that they sell at Woolworths. They be 100, 200. On the streets, is 10 rand and 15. Buy those. Okay, keep it simple. Because one thing I can tell you is that fruits and veggies are not expensive. The stuff that is expensive is meat. Meat is expensive. You understand? Meat, um, all these nuts. The, I'm not saying meat is not nutritious. But our people, that's all they eat. That's my point. You understand? That's why a lot of our people have gout. Read verse 15. Because another thing is our people like to say, you know, like, you know, I just wanted to spoil myself with, with, with ice cream. I wanted to take myself out. I spoiled myself. I ate such and such. When you examine what they ate, it's all just junk. Read verse 15 for me. You know Someone what's Solomon. that? Read verse 13. Start there. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. Go ahead. The fig tree put forth her green figs. Mm. And the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Watch this. Watch this. Let me show you something. Read that part again. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 3. The fig tree no, no. put it. No, not verse 3. Not verse 3. Verse 13. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. Come on. The fig tree put forth her green figs. Mm. And the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Mm. Go ahead. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. So now he's talking about what the figs and grapes. They say they give a good smell. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings 20. 2 Kings, this is when our forefather Hezekiah was sick. And the Lord blessed him. He added 15 years to his life. Read verse 7. You know what? Read verse, verse 5. Start at verse 5. And then we're going to jump. 2 Kings 20 verse 5. 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 5. Read. Turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. I will what? On the, I will heal thee. Come on. I will do what? I will heal thee on the what day? On the third day. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. He says, I'm going to heal you, Hezekiah. I'm going to heal you, Hezekiah. 
Watch this. Read the next verse. Read verse 6. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. You see what the Lord did? He says, I'm going to heal you. And not only that, I'm going to add 15 years to your life. You understand? Come on. And I will deliver thee and this city mm -hmm. out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Go ahead. And I will defend the city for mine own sake and that's for my Zion, servant. Read. The city that's Jerusalem, Zion, come on, the city of the great king. Read. And for my servant David's sake. Next verse. Watch this. And Isaiah said, take a lamp of figs. What did he say? Take a lamp of figs. Take a lamp of figs. The same figs we read about in Song of Solomon 2 verse 13. Go ahead. And they took and laid it on the boy, and he recovered. Go back to, give me now Sirach 38 verse 4. Watch this. Remember when it says the Lord made medicines out of the earth? We're reading about an example right now. So the figs was able to heal as a kind. Okay, so it's letting you know the fig is medicine. So is the apple, the orange, the banana, and so forth. Read what you got. Sirach 38 verse 4. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38 verse 4. Read. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise will not abhor them. Now watch this. Let's go back now. Song of Solomon chapter 2. Song of Solomon 2 and verse, read verse 15. Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. For our vines have tender grapes. So this is comfort food right here. The figs, feye, okay, feye, figi feye. Figs, grapes, okay, you understand? Flagons, raisins, apples, you can, though this is the comfort food you should take. These are the comfort food that you must take right there. All right, okay, so I'm gonna end the class right here. Okay, all praise to the most high. Um, let's break bread, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for laying his life down for us, the 12 tribes of Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.